Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, you can tell I'm not in the studio, I'm in my living room here and I'm looking out my, my glass wall to the, the mountains and the desert of, uh, of, of Arizona. And uh, it's Easter Sunday and I'm promising myself I'm not gonna do some epic <laughs> film that a lot of my videos feel like they are. So uh, what I wanna do here is just, I wanna review three uh, what I think are very good jazz resources. Now, it's not the only three that are out there that I would recommend, but these are three that come to mind. I've got a little bit of a relationship with each of these three guys, so I figured it made sense just to give you a sense of, of some resources out there that you may not be aware of. So, the first one is LearnJazzStandards.com. And this is the brainchild of a guitar player named uh, Brent Varstra. And uh, Brent's been at this a while. In the early days, you may know some of what he's done from YouTube where he created backing tracks for standard tunes. So if you go to YouTube and you do a search on a typical standard tune, you're likely to see something that looks like this. And you know, it was, that was shrewd of him because it, it built his brand and it, it built some name recognition. Uh, go to his site, you're going to see uh, books, ebooks. Uh, he's got a weekly podcast uh, I'll talk about in a second. And it's, it's a very well organized site. So as you can see, it says start here. And that's kind of his sales page to one of his flagship products. And from there, he kind of takes you by the hand to the process of uh, doing what his specialty is, which is learning jazz standards. I like a lot of his topics. You know, one of the topics I saw recently was developing a storyline for your improvisation. And I like that, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm big on kind of the, the overview of, of improvisation as opposed to just the scales or just the patterns. So that I think is, a, is an indication of kind of where Brent's coming from. He gets very granular at times in talking about chords and progressions, but at the same time, he does have the ability to go up 20,000 feet and, and look at that. He's, uh, he talks a lot about efficiency. Uh, Brent is very much on making sure you make the most of your time because I think he realizes that we don't have unlimited time to practice and to, to play and to learn jazz standards. And in fact, I was watching a video of his where he talked about compressing a quality practice session down to just 30 minutes. And he had it divided into three sections. And the first section was five minutes of warming up so that you could get your mechanics together and tackle the rest of the, of the uh, practice session. Well, I looked at that and I actually thought it was funny because, you know, he's a guitar player and he's showing, yeah, he just, you know, he did some arpeggios and, you know, in, in three minutes he's off and running. And uh, I, I did a, a blog post on my blog kind of answering that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to put a comment on his site, you know, and seem kind of uh, uh, disrespectful and say, you know, five minutes, that doesn't work for trombone players. But what was funny, and you can see from the blog post I did, that I compared guitar to trombone. And, you know, as I said to, to Brent, I, you know, five minutes, <laughs> I'm barely off my mouthpiece warm up, you know, in five minutes. Give me 30 minutes and I'm pretty much ready to play at full potential. Um, so it was, it was just an introduction that we had. And so we started talking and he said, well, why don't we do a podcast on warming up? And I guess warming up wouldn't have been my first, uh, uh, choice of a topic, but as we fleshed it out a little bit, it made sense. So we ended up doing a podcast on warming up for mind and body. So, because I, you know, we talked about not just the physical warm up, but also, uh, you know, preparing yourself for getting your pitch in your ear and getting harmony in your ear and just getting your, your head ready for music. It's not just about the physical part. So, Check out Brent's site, learnjazzstandards.com. I think you'll find some, some great resources that'll, that'll benefit you regardless of your instrument. Okay, the next site I wanna talk about is uh, from a guy named Steve Neff. Steve Neff runs neffmusic.com. And I ran into Steve, it was, his site was introduced to me and I reached out to him and I uh, was able to talk to him for about an hour and kind of pick his brain about what he's been doing and, and what life is like behind the scenes for him. And uh, you know, the one thing I will say about Steve one of the things is this is an industrious individual. You know, you, you look at the, the volume of work, he's got like over 600 videos and he's still cranking them out. 
the variety is is enormous. You know, he's got videos on every conceivable scale and what you play over every conceivable chord and different styles, uh, a whole series on playing outside the changes. And, uh, you know, he did, he, every, every product has a, a, a video and it has companion PDFs and he plays these scales for you. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he, I, I kind of look at him like he's a scientist, you know, in terms of the detail of the, of the, the science behind uh, playing jazz. Now, unfortunately, because he's a tenor player, he talks in B flat, at least what I've seen of him. I bought a few of his products and it seems like he talks in B flat. It's a little bit of a bummer to keep, you know, kind of mentally transposing, but there's still a ton here to learn. And it's not the worst thing in the world to have to use your brain to kind of translate from B flat to C if you're a trombone player or a C instrument, or if you're an alto player. I don't know how many alto players he has on his site, but uh, uh, you know, there's still a ton of learning you can do here. Um, his whole catalog is listed, so you can just scroll through all of his videos. What I would recommend is invest $10, pick out a topic and watch the, uh, watch the preview. He, he's very generous with his previews, by the way. Not every video has one, but enough of them. And you can sit there and watch a couple minutes of it and get a pretty good idea on what he's going to what he's going to talk about and how he's going to do it. So that's nefmusic.com. Go over to Steve's site, check out some previews, take a look at what he's got, invest a little bit and see what you think. All right, and the last resource I want to share with you is by a tenor sax player named Bob Reynolds, and you can find his stuff at bobreynoldsmusic.com. Bob is a member of uh, a great band called Snarky Puppy. And he also has his own quartet. It looks like uh, he does a lot of playing uh, all over the world with either Snarky Puppy or his, his quartet. Some great uh, clips of him at YouTube. Go check him out. Uh, and while you're at it, go to iTunes and, and check out some of Snarky Puppy's albums. There's some really great stuff there. And I'm in awe of his videos. I mean, really, I, they're beautiful. They're beautifully done. They're crisply edited, nice, really nice pace to the editing. You know, and, and, and kind of watching his videos, and I've been watching a lot because I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm almost binging on Bob Reynolds' videos because, you know, it's just a nice variety of, of talk, uh, of topics, you know, and, and it's not just pure sax. I mean, he does have one where he's just kind of uh, uh, geeking out on sax. But, you know, for, for the most part, he's kind of taking you in a little snapshot of his life. You'll see him coming into the hotel room. He's on tour lots of shots on stage, uh, stuff about how he's practicing in his hotel room. And, you know, the whole thing is kind of like, uh, like having a, a, a friend just to sit down and chat with about jazz. And that friend happens to be a really good jazz player. He puts his personal life into it a little bit. And you see his kids and, you know, he's got one video where, and I can relate to this years ago where he's trying to practice and his, his uh, toddler is, is, is screaming and, and chatting and yelling. And uh, it definitely reminded me of a few years ago. Well, I have to keep playing right now. So I hope it doesn't make you sad. It's a very human touch to a sax player and getting a little bit of a slice of their life and their, their, their knowledge of, of the craft. Bob does something a little bit different. Now, I mentioned that Steve Neff was industrious and it looks like Bob is as well because he's got hundreds and hundreds of videos, but he does something interesting. He has what's called a virtual studio. And if you look at his site, he says he opens it twice a year. Now, why does he do that? I think he does it because it creates some sense of urgency for people so that once, you know, he's, he's going to be able to go, okay, my doors are opening, my doors are opening. And I haven't been on his list long enough to know how he does this, but I'm guessing based on the stuff that I do see of his, it's probably outstanding, uh, an outstanding collection of videos. So, um, I highly recommend that as a resource. I would keep an eye out for when he opens up his, uh, his uh, virtual studio. And uh, I would, I, I, the, only, the only thing I would, I would like to, to request of him is that he put some, some uh, previews of his videos because I'd kind of like to see some of what he's got going. Uh, you know, keep the scarcity play, but maybe tease people with a few uh, uh, quick cuts of some of your videos. That would be my only suggestion. But, uh, um, great stuff, great resource, bobreynoldsmusic.com.
And before I finish, I just wanted to say something for people that say, why are you recommending things that aren't trombone? I'm figuring 85% of my audience is trombone players. But the point I would make is that if all you're doing is listening to trom trombone music and playing trombone pattern books and trombone licks and everything's in the first three positions and it's kind of like you've got muscle memory going on there, I think you're missing something. And I think whether you're watching a guitar player or, or a sax player or Steve Neff kind of dissecting licks and showing how he plays it on the sax, I think that's all a benefit no matter what instrument you play. But for trombone, you know, going back to Steve Neff, he is a Brecker fanatic, as I'm sure Bob is, because Bob talks about Brecker as well. Uh, you can actually go to Steve Neff's site and get some, some Brecker transcriptions. Now, you might think, well, that doesn't work for trombone, but of course it does. You know, you could slow it down to half speed and play through these things. Uh, you know, I remember early on, I was playing, uh, you know, s snippets of Brecker solos, the ones that I could actually play. But the beauty of, of going to these other instruments instruments and, and, and seeing their transcriptions and playing stuff of other musicians is it just, it just gives you a different place for your arm. In my book, Improv Savvy, I included transcriptions of uh, Bill Evans and Chet Baker, Freddie Hubbard and Dexter. Immersing yourself in what these guys play is critical to breaking you free of just sounding like a trombone player. So that's a quick question to a, a quick answer to a question I'm anticipating from people why I'm doing this. And the other thing is you may say, well, why are you promoting your competition? I don't look at these guys as my competition because I think we're all doing something different. You know, my, my style is not to create hundreds of videos on scales and patterns. I'm, I'm thrilled that somebody else has done that, but that's, that's not my sweet spot. So I think just like you want a variety of instruments, I think you want a variety of approaches and how to look at this thing called jazz improvisation because, you know, one size doesn't fit all. And uh, I hope you will check out some of these, these resources. I hope you'll buy some of their products. You'll like their videos. You'll, uh, you'll pass it on to your friends because all of us need all the help we can get. So I hope that helped you a little bit and uh, see you on the next video.